Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I think you know who this is. This is Shackleton. Very, very frisky uh, tonight. He's been uh, telling me all day that I should be doing a video because I haven't done one for a while. So I'm going to talk about, give you an update on the uh, climate system right now. And I've used this top here before to represent the stability of the Earth system. So we've been, we've been fortunate that since the end of the last um, ice age, we've had a very, very stable climate with which, in which uh, humans have developed. And, uh, okay, so he's distracting me here, Shackleton. Okay, so this is the Earth system here. We're in a stable state. And what we're doing is we're gradually with abrupt climate change, we're bringing this out of the stable state into a very unstable state. The climate system is highly nonlinear, and uh, it stays stable within certain boundaries, but exceed those boundaries, if you like, and uh, you get into uh, huge instability. So I had a little uh, chest break from the, for the last few weeks. Um, I've been preparing and went and played in the in the Canadian University Chess Championship tournament at my old um, in my old city at my old university McMaster University in Hamilton and University of Ottawa had three teams four players each and the top team came in third and I was in the second team you know we came in fourth basically and then the third team was down a bit but a lot of good chess a lot of driving um, you know if you are interested in chess I, I highly recommend it I use it as a good diversion um, from my uh, climate change work so and a very good chess application you know if you want a game you know go on to li chess Lee chess or lie chess you know it's a good application just be warned that it's pretty it's pretty uh, addictive and it can stop one doing uh, climate videos. So just to give you a sort of summary of uh, what's happening, you know, just sort of armchair, you know, overall summary for me to get back into my videos. We're getting huge weather disruption around the planet. We're getting lots of unusual events um, that are not normally um, occurring, they're falling well outside the three sigma, four sigma, five sigma standard deviation. So they're very, very rare events. You know, we might have called them one in a hundred year or one in 500 year events in the past. But like I said, the statistics of climate has changed because we've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere and the, and the oceans. So in Australia, for example, we're getting these tremendous heat waves right now. Some places in Australia are going as high as 50 degrees Celsius. Multiply by 9 fifths and add 32, that gives you 122 Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit. You know, I remember last summer when Ottawa was in the mid to high 30s and it was extremely uncomfortable, very, very high humidity. Um, you know, I don't think the humidity is quite as high in Australia unless you're in the coastal regions near the water, um, near the oceans where there's lots of evaporation. Um, and also down in Antarctica, a lot of the heat is getting down into, into Antarctica and it's causing um, a lot of warming there. So the, Ar the, the um, sea ice around Antarctica is at record lows. It's been at record lows, tracking low for quite a long time. And also there was a recent paper that talked about how the melt rates of Antarctica, of the ice that's on the continent, has gone, has, has become enormous um, compared to what it was just a few years ago. Um, so this is a huge uh, sea level rise uh, factor. Um, also, you know, a lot of these, we know that the West Antarctic ice sheet, um, which is grounded well below sea level in a lot of cases, so the ice is sitting on bedrock that's well below sea level, 
And we know that that's quite unstable because the water goes far inland and there's actually counter-regressive um, topography on the bottom. So the further in you go into under the ice, the deeper it becomes. The ice is pinned on certain pinning points and as it melts back, um, then it loses those pinning points and then it can recede in abrupt fashion. East Antarctic ice sheet is now also experiencing the same sort of thing. Um, although the uh, more of that ice cap is, is grounded um, on the land above sea level, but there's still significant coastal regions that are, that are grounded on bedrock well, well below sea level. Um, you know, in Canada, um, in, the US, in the U.S., mostly eastern U.S., we've had lots of these weather swings. So it'll be, you know, when the jet stream has moved north of us, um, then we're cut off from some of the very cold Arctic air. So we're getting around, the, hover, the temperatures are hovering around zero degrees, one degree Celsius. Um, so about, about 32 Fahrenheit. It's just hovering around freezing for three, four, five days or a couple days. And then the jet stream will come sharply south and we'll get these flash freezes. So for example, just a few days ago, it went from around zero degrees Celsius down to about minus 25 minus or so. Um, and that was in the space of a day. So this is definitely flash freeze, very, very rapid freeze. Uh, similar things in, in the US, um, you know, about the minus 30 Celsius, which is minus 22 Fahrenheit. And of course, uh, if you go to, if you weren't aware of it at minus 40, degrees the both the scales intersect so minus 40 celsius equals minus 40 uh, fahrenheit um, we've also been getting torrential rains in various locations some european locations also california uh, we're getting we're getting this atmospheric river phenomena where basically it's a connection between the warm pacific ocean to the land over california it's like a big fire hose up in the atmosphere these atmospheric rivers are like huge, um, basically like rivers in the atmosphere, you know, not um, literally rivers, but regions of very, very high water vapor concentration coming into California, dumping huge amounts of rain. The problem is, is a lot of that rain is starting to fa fall on hilly areas. And if it's in areas that have been subjected to recent wildfires, like for example, the Paradise wildfire, um, then those regions, um, when we get torrential rains in those regions, uh, watch out, we're in trouble because often we can get um, these massive landslides. And we've had that in the last couple of years in, in California. Um, there seems to be a lot more climate uh, anxiety amongst uh, climate scientists and amongst the general public that is paying attention to climate change. Call it climate anxiety, eco-anxiety, climate angst, for example. Just a few days ago, TV Ontario with um, Steve Pakin, I believe, did a show um, where there were three or four climate scientists, that, and, and the whole topic of the show is you know, how do, how do, we're getting a torrential amount, we're getting a del deluge of bad material, of bad, you know, basically dire information on climate. So how do we deal with it? What do we do in order to deal with it? So that show is talking about all of that. One of the biggest things is don't focus on the outcome, right? Climate change is a wicked problem. It's going to be something we're fighting for a long period of time. Don't focus on the outcome. Focus on the actions that you can do every day to try to make things a bit better. And don't worry so much about the metrics, about the measurements of whether you're succeeding or not. Just uh, if you keep at it, keep plugging away and there's enough people, then we'll reach a situation where the public, you know, declares, uh, forces governments to declare a climate change emergency. And we can see regions where that's happening in various cities and things. The jet streams are, of course, extremely distorted. Um, the, um, you know, in, in the, and it's because of this huge darkening in the Arctic, this huge Arctic warming. 
Um, as a, you know, Greenland melt rates are extremely high. Um, I mentioned Antarctic melt rates being very, very high from warm water undercutting the ice. You know, in Greenland, it's not just the warm water undercutting the, you know, with less and less sea ice, the oceans are warmer. That warm water is surrounding Greenland. It can go underneath the ice and increase calving events and undercut sea ice. Um, also, uh, what we're seeing is that um, we're, we're seeing that there's lots of methane coming from underneath the ice. So in the meltwater streams from Greenland, for example, and Antarctica, that water coming out from underneath the ice as it melts is high in, high in carbon uh, material, it's high in CO2 and high in methane. You know, it's got significantly more methane than people expected before. Um, and it's, it's uh, occupying the, the water underneath, it's sourced from the, you know, as the glaciers are grinding, as they're retreating, and, uh, you know, there's lots more meltwater coming down through moulins, which are holes in the glaciers. You know, high water pressure, it's, it's scouring the material from underneath the glacier and washing it out, and that material is high in, in methane. Um, CO2 levels are setting record highs. We've surpassed 413 parts per million, I saw in a recent paper. CO2 emissions, human emissions of CO2 reached a record 2.7% last year, and it was also a record the previous year, and this was after a few years where it was slowing down. Global population is still rapidly rising at about that 1.4% um, exponential growth rate, 1.4% uh, a year. Every morning when you wake up, the number of people born minus the number of people die is about 270,000 people on the earth. So think about that. You know, that's a decent sized uh, city and that's how much the population is still rising. So that, that remains a huge stressor. So basically, I mean, we need to declare a climate change emergency. That's the first step. Um, just in the last week, the city of Vancouver, you know, a big city in Western Canada, a very, very large city, to, you know, one of the councillors on city council put forward a motion to declare a global climate emergency and all the other councillors voted and it was unanimous. They've all obviously got a good council there, a good progressive council. So what that means, you know, I had to laugh. Okay, so what does that mean? They declared a climate emergency. That's the first step. It means that the city has 90 days to come up with a plan to um, further cut um, emissions and take stronger action on climate change and you know, on, on all aspects of climate change. So cut carbon faster, cut carbon deeper and adapt for the changes that are happening. They're getting lots of sunny day flooding on different um, coastal regions of parts of Vancouver. So if you have a king tide and uh, you know then with sea level rise and the king tide um, it's, an, it's high enough to actually um, flood regions that didn't flood before, you know, parks and roads and things like that along the coast. Of course, that's happening all the time now in, in Miami and other places. Um, so sea level is, is rapidly rising. Um, speaking of, um, of course, you know, we seem to be getting more uh, earthquakes and, you know, there's wildfires, tsunamis, polar shift. I mean, people are trying to, you know, come up with reasons for these sort of things, whether they're, they could be coincidental, some of these things, but some of them could be related. So there was some question as to whether the huge shift of mass off Greenland, for example, definitely lowers the weight on the, um, bed, on, on the bedrock, and then that can cause a, a reorganization of the fluids underneath, and could it cause a magnetic shift? Unlikely, because uh, that's formed much deeper down. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, Britain's uh, suffering, you know, f facing Brexit. You know, of course, we have Trump. Um, so the politics is not um, going the right way. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit further, but I'm running out of my time on this video. Um, I'll try to keep my videos to 15 minutes. Um, and uh, I'm going to film a another video now and continue this discussion. So thank you for listening.